How are you? Good. Okay, uh, I'm like a dang broken, broken record when I come over here. I've been trying to think about something different to say to start it out, but it was a good week of practice, and uh, they responded well to the challenge of uh, fighting back from a loss. We got to practice tomorrow morning. We'll just walk through some stuff, a lot of mental work to do. These guys now have to go to their first classes of the year. So uh, I think the first class is at 9. Um, so we'll see how they adjust to that. But uh, I don't know, I like where they're at. I like the way they responded during the week. Now what's important is that we go put it on display on Saturday. So uh, it looks like Jeff's going to be good to go. And uh, I don't mind reporting that and don't mind you guys reporting that either. Uh, I don't know, he's just, uh, he was really upbeat yesterday. Never seen a smile that big on his face. He came out today, he looked good, he did well. Um, hopefully they've got, you know, his, his headaches under control and he can, and he can help us. Uh, it's just good to have a veteran guy like that on our offensive line with the youth that we've got. It just, uh, he steps in the huddle, he steps up to the line and it, it really, it shouldn't be like this, it shouldn't be like this and when we mature, it won't be like this, but as soon as he gets in there, it's like, for the other guys, you know? And uh, you want to get to the point where that doesn't take place, but right now it's taking place, so it's good to have him back. Um, Jordan Zumwalt is out. He will not make the trip, and he will not play. As some of you probably know, he got in a, a scooter accident, uh, and he had a, a pretty wicked gash over his left eye, um, and he can't, he can't put his helmet on yet. So we're not even going to take him on the trip. Um, but other than that, I think we're in really good shape health-wise and uh, excited to go put last week behind us and move on. So. Does something, something need stitches for that cash? He needed, Chris, a lot of stitches. He needed, he needed, uh, well, first of all, he had it done over here at UCLA Medical Center and they did a great job. They called a plastic surgeon in and they just did a tremendous job on it. And really, he, he can't put a helmet on. You know, it reached up enough into his forehead where if he put a helmet on, it would just be, it wouldn't be good. So uh, we, he's got the week off, and I, you know we're very hopeful and pretty confident that he'll be back next week. How does that affect the linebacker situation? Well, just you know, the thing that helps us is that Damon, Damian Holmes has versatility, so he can play inside and outside. Um, you'll see more Ryan Hoffmeister this week. Uh, he's ready to go. Um, you know, the thing you miss when Jordan's not out there is his energy because he's just, you know, he just plays with maniacal effort all the time. But somebody else has to do that, you know, and that's what we're trying to preach. So uh, we'll miss him, but we'll we'll go on without him. We'll get him back next week. It's kind of a history of scooter accidents for players here at UCLA. Yeah. Is there a thought of outlawing them possibly? You know what? I, I thought about that. I was at the hospital Sunday with Jordan and his family and a bunch of our players, and it's ironic, I'm sitting in the uh, emergency room uh, waiting to get in to see a kid that just had a scooter accident and about five of our players pull up on scooters. <laughs> and so I really thought, you know, God darn, but they, they, a lot of our athletes and a lot of our students here on campus, they rely on those to get around because parking is such a premium. You know, there's a lot of demands on these kids to be at places on time. And I don't know that, that I, I can do that. I think a parent can do that. I think maybe, uh, a school could put that in, but I don't know that it's the right thing for us to do. Um, what's important is that they wear helmets, that their helmets are buckled. You know, Jordan had his helmet on, he had his helmet buckled, so it didn't fly off when there was a collision. And uh, I'm not a big fan of motorcycles and scooters, uh, but you know, it's it's the kind of the, the way these kids that live a mile or so off campus get around. And uh, I thought about it, but I'm not ready to make that that move yet. You know, I pray every day those kids are safe and healthy. Was he being reckless with it or anything? No, or? it was not his. It wasn't his fault. He okay. was not being reckless. Um, it was just an accident that happened. It happened right here off of campus. I don't know that anyone was sighted. I don't know the details of what transpired afterwards. I know what happened in, uh, you know, the version that I got. I didn't get both sides of the story, but mm -hmm. it didn't sound like he was being reckless at all. He was just going to get some breakfast and. Thank goodness he had his helmet on and he had it buckled. So, Speaking of helmets, you tend to have a, a lot of helmets come off so far this season. Yeah. Is, is that a matter of the, it, the equipment or the equipment manager? The now, our equipment staff is awesome. They do a great job. We, and it's not just us. If you notice, it's both sides. You know, in every game, it seems like three or four helmets pop off on each side. 
Um, last week, I think it happened to Oregon State three or four times and us three or four times. And I don't know if it's the new, uh, the new structure of the helmet these kids are wearing. You know, the chin strap's a little bit different. Chin straps used to come right up and, and, buck and buckle here. But with the, this Revolution Speed that Rydell makes, which is a great, great helmet, the chin strap comes down here and buckles. And so sometimes it, it slips off of the, the tracks that it's on and then it slips up off of their chin. And so it's a great helmet and the guys love it. And it's, you know, it's rated as the best helmet in terms of preventing concussions, but uh, it, there's a tendency for it to come off. Is you it know? a matter of fitting it correctly? Well, our guys fit, you know, they're fit correctly. I mean, our people, they check them once a week at least. They check them before the game. Uh, you know, our guys are not trying to be cool by having unsecured chin straps. Some of these guys have three buckles, as you've seen. It's just, I think it's just a function of trying to, the design of the helmet has changed a little bit and getting used to it, knowing how to buckle it in, buckle it down. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it can be dangerous. You know, the way that, that Shaq's popped off the other day, that was a hit from behind. You know, I don't know if it would have mattered what kind of helmet he had on, on that one. That was just a pretty violent hit. It seems like with the rule, maybe it's my imagination, that more helmets have been coming off. I think you, I, well maybe either that or we just notice it more because there is a rule. I don't know what it was like in the past, but you know, anytime a, a helmet comes off in the, in the, in, during the play, I mean, it's a dangerous event. Now the league, or the, uh, the NCAA has a rule that if your helmet comes off, you're supposed to, relinquish your pursuit of the ball or you know get out of the block that you're trying to to make or something like that but it's hard to do that when you're playing with that high energy but uh it's something we constantly look at um, it's a real concern and we're trying to make sure that we do the best job we can now i, I know this would be well beneath you but, doing Nothing. but could you be is there a way that guys could teach uh, get a guy out of the game get his helmet off yeah, but I think that would just deter from what you were trying to do. Yeah, we wouldn't talk about that. I mean, that because the, the only way you could get a helmet off a head is really to get up under the, the chin or the, the face mask. And if that happens in a game, that's a foul. And if they call, if your helmet comes off and you've been fouled in the process, then you don't have to leave the play for a game or leave the game for a play. So, no, we would never we wouldn't talk about that. Oh, I know. You guys would never do I don't that, think people do. I really don't. I, I, I mean, the coaches that I know, they don't talk about that stuff. I mean, we don't ever come out here to try to hurt somebody, uh, and I think that would be a little bit too violent. I don't. I, I wouldn't condone that at all. And I don't. I, the coaches that I know wouldn't either. So, yeah, how, how important is it coming off a loss to bounce back with a good shot? I think it's critical. I really do. I think. Uh, I think for us as a football team, you know, to 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 uh, to, to show ourselves first of all that we can handle the adversity that we can bounce back that we have resilience i think for our fan base you know to to restore any faith that you know we may have lost by losing on on saturday um, just to get our momentum back it's very important you know it's very very important it'll be tough it's hard to win on the road but it doesn't matter we've got to go do it and uh Colorado's a good team who's coming off a, a great win. So I like the challenge, you know, and I think it's great this early in our development, you know, this early in this new, the, the development of this new program to see where we are and see how we handle it and see if we have the mental toughness and, and, and just where we are and where we need to go. So I think it's a really great opportunity for us. How do you balance that, you know, me saying that this is really important to bounce back, with not overstating that case where this game becomes all important? Yeah, you know, really, um, when you talk to the team, you just make it about yourselves, you know, playing to our standard. And I say that a lot, and what I mean is we always come out here and we prepare for the opponent. Like, you know, we run their plays, we run their defense, and we prepare for But when we go in and we talk in the meetings, we're essentially trying to elevate our standard of play. And so we try to keep the focus more on us and the way we're playing rather than the opponent and where we're playing and what the game means in terms of rankings or bouncing back or things like that. So I think we can do that and if we can get that ingrained in our in our student athletes then you can develop some consistency. That's a tough separation though between it is. saying this is it, It's really hard. Yeah, it's really hard. And it's a for a coach there's a rub there because you know you you want to emphasize, you got to bounce back, got to bounce back, but you don't want that to be the emphasis. The emphasis needs to be, hey, we got to play great football. We got to pay attention to details. We got to play with great effort. We got to execute. You know, we got to do the things that we're supposed to do. We have to play to our standard. So you're always trying to balance that. Jim, can you talk a little bit about the Colorado quarterback? He had a pretty good bounce back in the last week. He did. Especially after just throwing for 89 yards in the Fresno State, and then 
goes for over 300 last week. Yeah, I watched him again last night, and uh, specifically to just watch him. He's uh, he's elusive, you know, and he throws well on the run to his left, which isn't easy to do. So he's a guy that when he gets out of the pocket, he remains a passer. Like you'll see quarterbacks as soon as they get out of the pocket, tuck the ball, and so that's an indication to your to your secondary that hey, we can come out of cover and start coverage and pursue this quarterback. This guy keeps it in his hand and he keeps his eyes down the field and he remains a threat to throw the ball and that makes it hard. Plus he's accurate on the run. I saw him throw a couple across his body when he's moving to his left. Um, he's a good player. He plays with a lot of confidence and he's, he's not easy to get down. He's slippery back there. Throwing well going to his left, he's running right into Anthony Barr, isn't he? I would hope so. Uh, <laughs> I would hope so. We'll hope Anthony's out there. Anthony is a guy, uh, you know, you bring up his name. I, I don't know if you guys notice it like we do. I'm sure you do. I mean, the guy's playing tremendous. I mean, the level that he's playing at, considering his experience at that position, is really amazing. I mean, he's played, what, four games at outside linebacker really in his life, I think. Unless he, you know, I think he told me he played two plays or two games at Loyola. And uh, I mean, he's just doing some amazing things. And you see, sit with him in meetings. He's in the front all the time. He answers every question first. I mean, he knows every adjustment. I mean, he's so committed. It's really neat to see him growing the way he is. So, okay? All right, thank you.